Hello, hello, welcome or welcome back to the chatty side of Yoga with Paige. I am Paige and today I wanted to talk a little bit about intentions, manifestation, kind of the difference between the two, what they are, how they're connected, how they're a little bit in contrast with each other, how you can begin to kind of set your own intentions and why we even practice this. So if you have practiced with me here before, some of our yoga flows together, you might hear me say or have heard me say, um, you know, I invite you to now set an intention for this practice or for your day. And we're just going to kind of go over what this means and how you can go about changing your life by utilizing this really simple and easy mindset shift practice. So first things first, why do we set intentions? So intentions, if you want to use a little metaphor to help yourself kind of think about what they are, I know this is like a little abstract idea, it's not a tangible thing, but intentions, if we think about them in the form of thought, they are basically a little seed. So thinking of like a tree or a big plant for this metaphor, your intentions are the seed. And if you're trying to, say, change something, usually there are many things throughout our day that we hope we can act a certain way, we hope we can keep a certain mindset, maybe there's something that we want to actively change about ourselves, and so we have to think about them every single day to enact these different behavior changes. So if we think about what we want to change as the big tree, so if we're trying to grow this tree, our intention is the little seed, the little seed that will sprout up into the tree. It is your first initial thought. It is what you intend to do. So what you intend to grow, what you intend to change, you know, your intention for your yoga practice could be to move with fluidity and grace. Your intention for your yoga practice can be more of an emotional intention, say, let's see how much space I can create in the mind and open up. I intend to be vulnerable. My intention here is to move with love and send my body and my mind love. So they're really, really supposed to be heartfelt, natural to you. A lot of times I try not to even say my intention or give you examples because I believe that they should be really, really true from the heart because they're a very emotional and connecting thing. The, they are here to help you connect to yourself, to what you want to change in the world and in yourself. And they're supposed to be true to you, authentic to you. If you're kind of taking, you can take inspiration from other people that can help kind of jog ideas, but Really, I believe intentions should be like one of the first things that come up in your mind. And if you don't have something at that moment, then maybe you're okay and you don't need one for your practice or your day. So to help yourself think of if you're kind of struggling with intentions and like what they are and how to start practicing them, you can kind of think about things that are important to you. So what are the things right now in this moment that are the most important to you or that you want to cultivate more and you can use that as the basis to help yourself set your intention. So say loving relationships are really important to you, family and friends, then you can kind of create your intentions around being a more supportive partner, around, you know, prioritizing quality time with your partners, your relationships, um, things like that. So that can help you kind of begin to think about how to set these intentions. If you are new to this practice, it is a very, very connecting way. Why do we set intentions? They help us if we're trying to change something um, in a day-to-day -day life, not as much in your yoga practice, but in day-to-day -day life, if you're trying to change or mold a certain behavior that you want to adapt to, 
they can really, really help you to just keep this change or this behavior in the forefront of your mind. So when we're talking about a yoga practice, it can help us really anchor back into the moment. So you can use your breath as an anchor into the present moment. Whenever you your mind kind of starts to drift, wander away, you can use the feeling of the physical breath in your body to pull you back in, to draw you back in. Um, letting your mind wander away, it can pull you back in. Poof, the second my mind starts to wander, I notice my breath. Or you can come back to your intention. The moment my mind starts to think about other things, I now think about my intention for this practice. It can really help you to draw yourself back into the moment, um, helping you tune out distractions and find that unity of body and mind, this meditation, this concentration, this focus that we are always trying to kind of attune ourselves to. So it is a way that we can help ourselves anchor back in in our yoga practice and it can really help us just stay on track. You know, where your attention goes, your energy flows, all of those little quotes that you've heard, because they are kind of true. So what you think about, what you continuously think about, think about, think about, you end up putting that energy out there. You end up manifesting. We will talk about manifestation in a little bit, but you end up manifesting what you are consciously or subconsciously always thinking about. And this goes with your um, your positivity and your negativity of your thinking. So if you're always kind of positively thinking in one area, you tend to see a lot more instances of those be like our brain's confirmation bias. So if we're thinking about something or if something is at the forefront of our mind, our brains are naturally going to continue to look for that thing or they want to, it wants to show us this thing. It's, it's, it's in tune to look for this thing. Our attention is there. Our focus is there. We're now subconsciously looking for confirmation of this thought or of this thing. This is a psych psychological phenomenon that actually has been studied. So if we are intending to change our behavior and we're constantly thinking about it, we wake up, set our intentions in the morning, and if we think about it just a few times throughout that day, if we come back to our intention, if we revisit it, whether we are attuning to it or not in a positive way, say maybe we didn't react in the way that we intended to, even that right there, even that neural connection of thinking about your intention and how you're doing with it thus far attunes your brain to it more often than not. You're shifting your focus, you're shifting your awareness, and the more often you think about these things, the more often you are likely to take active steps in changing whatever it is or taking active steps that will lead you eventually to whatever it is. This kind of leads us into the talk of manifestation. So continuing on with our metaphor, if our intention is the seed, the little seed of this tree or this plant, manifestation is basically when this seed blossoms into the full tree or the plant. Manifestation is basically the consequences or the causal effect of your intention and of taking active steps toward it. So subconsciously, your intention will stay in the back of your mind. Consciously, if you actively take steps to reach your intention and you don't just kind of sit here and say, I intend to do this. But if you stop right there, your seed will not grow. You're not watering it. You're not giving it sunlight. You're not giving it the proper nutrients and proper love that it takes for this tree and for this plant to blossom and sprout. So you can't really have an intention without taking conscious, active steps to manifest something. So your manifestation, it might, it might happen. It might happen on the off chance or statistically or what have you. But if you are not taking active steps, the possibility of yourself ending up in that result that you desired is not as secure as if you are taking active steps. If you are manifesting that something will happen, you it's a it's a twofold process. You intend, you think there is thought behind it, there is desire behind it, 
you have a set goal in mind, but you also need to take physical steps. You can't just wait for something to happen. And I think I see a lot of people kind of misusing intentions in this way or the word manifestation in this um, in this era, in this time period we have now. I'm seeing these words float around a lot. And I think some people kind of either misuse them or don't quite understand how they should be used in conjunction with each other and what they truly just mean. Manifestation means that you have taken steps towards reaching this desired outcome and you have thought about it. You have worked towards making this desired outcome possible. You have worked towards making it come true. It does not mean that you just thought about something every night before you went to bed and it just happened for you. It means that you are probably taking steps, whether you consciously realized those steps or if just repeating this intention and repeating this goal to yourself made you without realizing it, made you take steps, made you say yes to opportunities you might not have said yes to if you weren't constantly thinking about this manifestation, this end result that you wanted, that you desired. So I think it is a twofold process and I don't think you can manifest something. You can't have this big tree sprout without intending and setting an intention, but you also can't manifest something without properly watering it and giving your little seed, your little intention, sunlight and proper care to grow and the steps that it takes to get there. So I believe that they are connected, interwoven together. I think your intention is your thought behind it, your driving action, your initial like what you want to happen. And I believe manifestation is the end result of your desire, of your hard work, You're achieving this goal. You're taking active steps to change your life, to better yourself, your environment, your whatever situation you are trying to intentionally change. I think they go hand in hand. And I think setting intentions and living intentionally is not as scary or as difficult as it may seem. It does take time. It is a practice. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the more fun you have with it. And the more authentic, the more you dig deeper inside, the more you connect with your intentions and you really, really want to live through them. You really want to see them happen. And especially if you do see yourself manifesting one of your intentions, you probably want to start making even more and living more consciously because you see that you do have the power within you. The power is all in your mind. You have the power to change everything and create exactly the life you want to live. It just takes some conscious thought and a little bit of conscious effort. The two combined can create something so beautiful and you have it within you. This is exactly a part of our yoga practice that we try to take off the mat. The feeling of the power, the embodying the power, the strength, the resilience, the balance, the courage, the confidence that we feel on the mat as we are moving and gaining physical strength, we're gaining mental strength. We're finding that connection with ourselves, that deeper connection, living truly what we want and what we feel. So this is what I mean when I tell you in our yoga practices together that I encourage you to set an intention to live a little bit more consciously you never know what happens and you have the power to create it all to change whatever you want and to live exactly the way you want to live so that is why I wanted to have this little discussion today to help you in some understanding of what it means to help you live a healthier and happier life Especially maybe if all we need to do is take five minutes in the morning and write these intentions down. Maybe speak them out loud in the mirror to yourself. Just even if you feel silly the first few times. Say, I intend to eat healthier, make healthier eating choices today. Or I intend to talk to everyone and try to give positive reactions when people tell me things. Whatever it is, whatever naturally comes about, 
it doesn't have to be anything monumental. They can be small. They can be little things that you want to just practice shifting your attention. I encourage you to try this out today. Give it a try. Set an intention for your day or maybe just a part of your day. Set an intention for your commute to work that you will remain calm, cool, and relaxed no matter how idiotic the drivers are on the road. Whatever it is, I encourage you to give this a go, practice it, and I would love to know what your experience are with intentions. If you set intentions for a lot of your practices, if you journal with intentions, I would love to know your experience, how you think they work together with manifestation, and I would love to hear your experiences down below. I think this is another way that we can live consciously and give ourselves the life that we fully deserve. So if you are still with me, thank you for tuning in to today's video on Yoga with Paige. If you enjoy this channel, if you liked this topic, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below over here, wherever the button is, to continue showing this channel support and love. And I thank you so much for being here and joining this yoga community. I look forward to the next time we chat or the next time we move together on the mat. Have a blessed and intentional, conscious, heartfelt rest of your day. I'll see you next time.